ball peen hammers. Welcome back to Black Bear Forge and the tool of the day. Or if you've been paying attention, you know that after two tools of the day, I already missed one, so it's the tool of the sometimes days. Anyways, you get the idea. Today I thought we would talk about ball peen hammers. We've talked about cross peen hammers, straight peen hammers, diagonal peen hammers, and really the cross peen hammer is probably the most common forging hammer in the shop. But ball peen hammers are a very common hammer and they have a lot of uses even though most people don't use them too much for forging. So what is the key element of a ball peen hammer? Well as with most of the other shop hammers, it has a face that is relatively flat with some nicely radiused edges so you don't leave gouge marks. But of course, it's the peen that defines the hammer, just like a diagonal peen defines a diagonal peen hammer. A ball peen that is ball shaped defines a ball peen hammer. So what good is this ball peen? What, what do you use that for? So if I start a step down here, just like I did demonstrating the cross peen hammer, And of course you can forge with a flat face of a ball peen hammer. It really comes down to hammer weight more than anything. But now I've got that step down and I want to spread that, but I want to spread it round. Well that's what the ball peen hammer does. You start in the middle and kind of work your way around. You can spread this more evenly than you can with a cross peen or a straight peen hammer, if that's what you're going for. Well, one thing I don't think that a ball peen hammer should be used for is just this gratuitous beating up of uh, material just to create a ball peen hammer texture that some people equate with hand forged. No change to the stock, nothing's happening that has anything to do with forging other than the gratuitous beating up with a ball peen hammer and I personally I don't think that's what you should use these for. They're used for spreading. Boy we have gone from severe drought conditions for the month of May, June, and July to really wet and having flooding problems. So it's raining again and it's not even noon yet, which is really unusual for us. So sorry about the noise in the background. Another thing that ball peen hammers are frequently used for is riveting. People like to be able to spread a rivet evenly all the way around with the ball peen and you can kind of get in and tuck the edges down and they're pretty handy for that. Although I find that a lot of the more experienced smiths don't feel that's necessary and they do a very good job of riveting with any flat faced hammer that they happen to have in their hand. So you don't need a ball peen for riveting. Like most hammers, ball peens come in a wide variety of sizes. They've got little ones, these are about eight ounce hammers and you can get them up to two or three pounds. I don't think these bigger ones are, are quite that large. These are probably about Probably close to two, but these aren't three pound hammers, but they are available in those sizes if you want to use a ball peen as your primary forging hammer. Most people don't, and I really have never thought of it as a primary forging hammer, uh, just because I'm from a part of the world that likes a cross peen hammer, I guess. Do you need a ball peen in your shop? No, I don't think so. Uh, they are handy to have. You might as well have them. They are easy to come by. You find all sorts of ball peen hammers at garage sales and flea markets and things like that. So you might as well have some. You will find uses for it. In addition to spreading with the peen or using it to set rivets, it also comes in handy if you're dishing and making something like this candle cup. Sinking that into a swedge is very easy to do with a ball peen hammer. Be careful not to leave too many ball peen marks, which is one of their big problems. They concentrate the blows in such a small area, it's easy to leave a whole bunch of hammer marks with one. So while I certainly don't think you have to have a ball peen hammer in your shop, I think they're an optional tool. A 12 ounce and perhaps a 20 ounce certainly come in handy. 
And if you find them and can pick them up cheap, you might as well have them available. You'll probably find uses for them. And some people like reforging the ball end into other things. These make good handled rivet sets, punches, simple chisels, other tools, because this can be drawn out into a punch end or a chisel end pretty easily. And then you just don't harden this in, and it makes a great top tool. Clay Spencer used to make a lot of tools for the treadle hammer out of old ball peen hammers. So I hope you enjoyed that quick look at ball peen hammers. Again, I don't feel they're a vital necessity in the shop, but they do come in handy. So if you can get a few, you might as well go ahead and do that and have them available in the shop. I had asked how people wanted to do the tool of the day series, if they wanted me to do all the hammers and then do all the tongs and then do all the punches, so, some sort of format like that. And it seems like that's the most popular but there were a lot of people that still wanted to mix it up. So what I'll probably do is do most of the common hammers or the hand hammers, forging hammers you use at the anvil. And then we'll go on to something else and I will come back and talk about things like reposé hammers or sinking or raising hammers, things that just don't get used that much and aren't even found in a lot of shops. And I'll make those a separate segment on hammers. So we, we'll cover all the common ones then we'll do something else. Then we'll do a few more different styles of hammers. But we'll try to keep things fairly consistent and fairly well organized so it's a little bit easier to find. And so it makes a little bit more sense, especially if you're brand new and you're just shopping for hammers. Somebody thought I should always end these segments with what my recommendation is. And I've already covered that as far as a ball peen hammer is concerned, that they're not vital, they're nice, 12 ounce, 20 ounce, something like that would be good in the shop if you have it, but you don't have to go searching for one if you don't have it. But my general recommendation for a forging hammer is a two to two and a half pound cross peen if you're new and two and a half to three pounds if you've been swinging a hammer for a while and are comfortable with the heavier hammer. But I think a cross peen hammer is the most universal, the most adaptable hammer to do just about any work you need. And if you can only have one hammer, that two to two and a half pound cross bean is the one I would buy. Anyways, hope you enjoyed that. Give it a thumbs up if you can. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that already. That way you'll know when I do another tool of the day, because it might not be tomorrow, but then again, it might be. In the meantime, get out to your shop and swing a hammer. That's the only way you get better at doing this, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.